By far the best way to build a sender application for Android is to use the Cast Companion Library, or CCL for short. CCL provides a collection of ready-to-use components that provide features and behaviors recommended by the UX guidelines. CCL primarily helps you build media-centric apps, but it's also helpful for data-centric use cases as well. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the major features, and in the next, we'll see how it's used in practice. Now, as you can see, CCL does quite a bit for you. The main features include a ready-to-go mini controller and a full-screen player. Also included are notifications to provide player controls when your app is closed or out of focus, lock screen controls so the user can maintain control even if their phone's locked, closed caption support, and Wi-Fi reconnection support in case the connection drops. You control the CCL through the Video Cast Manager. This is a singleton that maintains the state of the application and keeps track of the connectivity to the cast device behind the scenes. It also keeps track of the playback status of the receiver, for instance, if it's playing or paused. Now, for a data-centric app, you'd use its analog, which is actually called the Data Cast Manager instead of the Video Cast Manager. Before you can use it, you have to initialize it, as we're doing here. When you initialize it, you choose which features you want enabled. The first argument is your application context, and the second is the application ID of your receiver. We'll get to the third and fourth arguments later. At this time, you also select the types of features you'd like enabled. Here, we're enabling quite a bit, notifications, lock screen, and so forth. When you use the CCL, you want to create an instance of the Video Cast Manager early, typically inside your onCreate method of your activity. Before you do so, though, it's a good idea to call this method to check whether Google Play Services is installed and updated. If it's not, the CCL will automatically show the user a dialog that will direct them to take the appropriate action. The third argument when we initialize the CCL is for a player control activity. If you leave it null, CCL will provide one for you. This player shows automatically during media playback and provides controls to play, pause, and seek. You can also start this activity manually if you like, using the Cast Manager instance, like this. This argument, by the way, is an instance of media info, and that's a class used by Cast to keep track of metadata for a video or a song. Check out a link to that in the instructor notes. Now, the fourth argument is a namespace of a custom message channel, if you'd like one created between your sender and your receiver. Once the channel's created, you can easily send messages with just a single message call. CCL also provides callbacks to inform you whether a message was received and whether there was an error. And if you have a data-centric app, the Datacast Manager makes it easy for you to add a number of channels, each with their own namespace. One of the ready-to-use components CCL provides is the mini controller. This is a small controller that can be added to the layout XML of your different activities. Its purpose is to allow the user to browse to different pages of your app while still being able to control the cast. If you use this component, in addition to the XML, you'll need to register it with the Video Cast Manager inside your activities on create method. Also remember to unregister it in on destroy. Behind the scenes, the Cast Manager handles everything else, including updating its metadata, its playback state, as well as hiding it when no media is playing. And for details on all of this, check out the instructor notes. Another great ready-to-go component is notifications. CCL shows these automatically when your app is in the background or killed. All you have to do is indicate you want this feature when you initialize the Video Cast Manager. Then you need to keep CCL informed when your app is active or not, and you do this by incrementing or decrementing the UI counter inside your onStart and onStop methods. Another excellent ready-to-go feature are lock screen controls. When you enable this feature when you initialize the Video Cast Manager, a Play Pause button will automatically show on Android devices running Jelly Bean or higher. And as an added bonus, CCL automatically provides the ability for users to control the cast device's system volume even if your application is in the background and your screen is locked by using the hardware controls on your phone. CCL makes reconnecting to a running cast session easy, for instance, if the Wi-Fi drops. To do so, it starts up a reconnection service behind the scenes, and you have to indicate you want this functionality both when you initialize the Video Cast Manager and also by adding these lines to your Android manifest. You need these permissions as well. Then, inside your onCreate method, indicate that you want to reconnect to an existing session if possible. And this parameter here is a timeout in seconds. In addition to helping you out of the Wi-Fi drops, the reconnection service is also great if your app is killed before you can gracefully exit the cast session. If the user then restarts your app, you can automatically rejoin the existing session. That's the CCL in a nutshell. We have an extensive PDF guide you can find in the instructor notes that will provide details on how to use all these features in your app. And again, if you're building or extending an Android app to work with Cast, the CCL is definitely your best way to go. Another great resource is the Cast video sample. This contains a handy guide on downloading and installing the CCL and connecting it to another project inside Android Studio.